what your first reaction was when you heard the news that uh, the Queen is under medical supervision? Um, I mean, I think it's pretty sad, like, when anyone kind of gets in that position, like, you wouldn't want that to happen to your own family member. Um, but I, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of the Queen, or just, like, the monarchy in general, so I wasn't, like, that upset or overwhelmed by it. It was just something that happens, I guess. You're not the biggest fan of, of the monarchy, I wonder why. Um, mainly to do with, like, British, like, colonial history, things like that, a lot of things that have gone on, which have been quite shady, even, like, recently, with, like, Prince Andrew and everything, so, um, the team. yeah, I'm not really that biggest fan. <laughs> Not him saying nice talking to you when we know there is a high chance that he regrets asking for her opinion. <laughs> and I have to say, the courage, and she did not stutter. She even mentioned Andrew too, like slay <laughs> on CNN. <laughs> but I do have to tell you, I feel that reporter was hot. Like I could hear it in his voice, the pain. I could hear the pain in his voice. But at the end of the day, someone had to say it. And she did. I mean, they asked her and she answered. Serve them right, I say. <laughs> she said what she said and she said it on CNN. <laughs> This comment says the government and the media need to stop telling us how the nation feels. I think they've read the room wrong. Here we are. The day has arrived. We all knew this was coming. I'm going to keep this brief. Indigenous people and victims of colonization are going to feel how they're going to feel. They are allowed to do that. Don't tell them how to behave or how to respond to this. Enforcing civility and respectability politics in the face of marginalized people telling you harsh truths is in fact just upholding white supremacy and weaponizing it against marginalized people. The British monarchy are not good people. It is not a good institution. It does not deserve to exist. I am not celebrating the death of this woman by saying that. I woke up this morning and now I have a king. My elected officials are taking time off to be sad about the death of a foreign head of state. It is a patently and obviously ridiculous way of organizing society on its face. That should do it. At least some of them get it. Well, there just might be hope for the future and it's interesting to see really. Um, I don't feel much. I mean, it's sad that she's dead, but like she was a colonizer and she was right. So no offense to anyone that's Oh, royalist. No, but is that the right word? Royalist. Yeah, yeah. That one, yeah. Are you white? Yeah. Fully white? Yeah. You got no... Not a little bit of... No. Man could not believe his ears and his eyes, and that makes the two of us, because I too had the exact same feeling. I was like, uh-uh, you are not white. Or are you white passing? What is happening here? <laughs> but I do have to tell you, the are you white took me out. It's no different to me at all. I'm Irish, so... Nothing. Uh, she had a long, glorious career, and she was a devoted mother to at least one pet and faithful cousin to her husband. Hey, wahala, double, triple, quadruple, wahala for Queen We Good Day. E, 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 hey, come and see update, oh. Ha, people literally are working with things bottled up, oh. Until you ask them, you will never know. <laughs> The things you would find out if you ask people questions. Eh? <laughs> Faithful cousin to her husband. He slipped that one in too. Hey! Oh, we are Borgano. The internet is a beautiful place. Me, I'll just be here in my house on my phone scrolling. They receive constant updates. Wow. Have you got a message for the queen? No, she's dead. I mean, she, she might see this. Do they have TikTok in hell? <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to Princess Diana for me. Do you think she's gone to heaven? Oh, good question. Okay, so I've just had a very awkward conversation with someone who wasn't happy with my tone regarding the Queen's death. And here's the thing. I genuinely don't take any pleasure in the death of another human being. But the sycophancy both confuses and frustrates me. And if you think I'm going to go along with that, I'm afraid you're very, very wrong. And look, there are many people who are going to really feel this and genuinely mourn. I get that. And if that was all that was going on, there'd be no problem. I'd be happy to completely ignore it, to leave it all well enough alone. But the problem is, it won't leave me alone. Because actually, that's not all that's going on. We all know it's going to be rammed down all of our throats for the next month at least. 
Every TV channel, every website, every newspaper is going to be full of glowing memories and stories of adoration for this woman who was apparently such a good queen, as if such a thing were possible. And why? Why does the death of one obscenely privileged 96-year-old woman evoke such ubiquitous coverage and such outpouring of emotion? Why does it seem like her death is being milked for all it's worth? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the monarchy exists fundamentally to continue the work of creating and maintaining the myth of nationhood in order to reinforce existing power relations. In short, it is there to maintain the status quo, to keep us all in our place. And that is a very dangerous thing indeed, because it's used not just to justify, but to keep all of us ignorant of and impotent in the face of all manner of crimes, all manner of evils. And I, for one, want nothing to do with that. But okay, you may say, perhaps that's true. But it's the institution of the monarchy that's the problem, not the queen as an individual. To which I say, it's both. The only reason you don't know that is that negative stories about the queen are suppressed by the hegemony of a media class that bought into the system long ago. So the reason you don't know the queen successfully lobbied the government to change a draft law in order to conceal her, quote, embarrassing private wealth from the public. The reason you don't know the Queen's private estate, the Duchy of Lancaster, hid millions of pounds in offshore tax havens. The reason you don't know the Crown successfully lobbied for an exemption to equalities legislation so it could continue to discriminate against employees on the basis of their race. The reason you don't know these things is that the vast majority of the media are in on it too, because they like things the way they are. To paraphrase the infamous Noam Chomsky interview with BBC journalist Andrew Marr some years ago, if mainstream journalists thought any differently to those in power, they wouldn't be in the job. And look, there are going to be some of you furiously typing that I shouldn't be speaking ill of someone when they've just died, and when people are mourning. And I get that impetus, I really do. But I'd say two things to that. First, when would you like me to speak about this stuff? When nobody's talking about it? When nobody's actively conducting the grotesque carnival of sycophancy that surrounds the monarchy? There's never a good time to talk about this stuff. No matter what's happened, I always get the same comments telling me it's the wrong time. Well, I disagree. It's precisely the right time to talk about this, because the role the monarch inhabits as head of state is a political one that affects us all, even if many people have somehow managed to convince themselves that it's not. Second, given what I've outlined in this video, would you say the same of an equivalent figure upon their death if they weren't the Queen? Would you, for example, suggest that we shouldn't criticise Vladimir Putin if he died tomorrow? Or perhaps what about Donald Trump? Or perhaps a less political figure like Martin Shkreli? So maybe let's have a little consistency. Let's be honest about who the Queen really was and what she really did, rather than just swallowing the propaganda like warm vomit. She was not somehow better than the rest of us. She was not ethically untouchable. She was not just a nice little old lady. She was a complex, secretive, calculated human being, just like the rest of us. And yes, she was a divine, beautiful, driven human being whom God loved, just like the rest of us. And I don't see why any of that should entitle her to perverse levels of power and wealth, nor exempt her from well-deserved criticism. Let's try to have some perspective. There is definitely a change going on, a turning in the tides, and I'm here for it. With the news of Eliza's passing, a lot is happening, and people are saying a lot more would happen. And right now, I'm not just talking about what's going to happen, you know, with the crown. People are talking about the fall of, you know, the empire, but... I don't know. I guess we're just going to be here and watch how everything plays out. Hopefully, it's going to turn out for the good of each and every one of us. And I do want to hear your thoughts. What do you think about all of this? Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one.